So beams in Roblox Studio are basically an object that can render a texture between two attachments. And they are used in creating pretty amazing visual effects. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content. And let's get into the video. So first let's cover how to actually use beams in Roblox Studio. And well, we need at least a base part. And then it needs to have an attachment. Let's think of this attachment as the starting point of our beam, where if I duplicate it, this is going to be the ending point. And now for the beam part, we need to actually create the beam instance. And then down in the properties, under the shape tab, we need to select attachment 0 as the first attachment, and attachment 1 as the second attachment. And it's going to create, well, this. This is basically the default beam preset, which is well a still image. But to just cover the properties a little bit more, we have the color, which just changes the color of the beam, like so. Then we have the enabled property, the light emission, which determines to what degree the color of the beam is blended with the color behind it. Then the light influence, which if this value is also decreased, is going to add another property called brightness, which just changes the brightness of the beam. And then there is a texture which I'm going to leave for later, same with all of the stuff like the length, mode and speed, but now there is the transparency, which can also be a number sequence. So you can actually set it to be, for example, fully transparent in this part right here. And this just works like a normal number sequence. Then the Z offset, which is just an offset installed to the camera. And then the data tab is pretty self-explanatory, but then there is again the shape, where we have the curve size, where if I change it, you can see that it's going to give a bezel curve from the attachment. And same with the second one. Then there is the face camera property, which is just going to make the beam always face the camera. Then segments, which just determines how much geometry there is in the beam. If I set it to for example 1, it's basically just going to be one face created out of two triangles. But if I change it to for example 100, it's just going to be really smooth. And now there is the weave, which is the term is the width of the starting point of the beam. We can even make it really tall if we wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it on one. And you can also even rotate these attachments because the beams are basically just going to be relevant to their positions. And I'm just going to make this part transparent. But let's go to the texture now, because there is actually a little bit more that I need to talk about. And I'm just going to add an image from my computer, which is just a random image that I found. And I think it was supposed to be rotated vertically instead of horizontally. So yeah, this was supposed to be the image, but like I said, it was supposed to go horizontally and not vertically. But this on the stretch actually gives a pretty cool effect. But anyways, that's basically the texture property. Then there is the texture length that we can, for example, increase or decrease. Then the texture mode, where you have the static image. Then the stretch which is just going to stretch the beam image or the beam texture so it fits into the actual beam object. And there is the wrap. And wrap is pretty similar to the stretch, except it also works on the length of the beam, where if I set it back to stretch, it's basically going to stretch it out across the whole beam. And lastly, there is the texture speed, which just determines how fast the texture goes along the beam. And it can even go backwards like this. So yeah, that's the basics of the beam, but let me actually show how you can make a well good looking visual effect with a proper texture. So I basically just went out into Photoshop and fixed the well texture. But let me just change the texture mode to actually be static. And now this is the proper image. Now I can also increase the texture speed to for example 2 or something faster like 5. And let's actually just reset the transparency number sequence. And this is going to be our beam right here. So I can, for example, make it a little bit more transparent towards the end. Also mess around with the curve size and change the second width. So well, we have something like this now. I could also mess around with the texture strength. And just, for example, have this as a some kind of a jet beam that you would see on a spacecraft. Or maybe like a nitro that you would see on a car. But I'm thinking about it, this is kind of resembling a trail more than a beam. But anyways, so that's one of the beams. But I also saw a dev forum post where someone actually made a laser beam. And I kind of wanted to recreate that because they also provided an image. And the link to that post is going to be down in the description. So again, I'm going to add another beam instance and just fiercely select the attachments. Then I'm going to set the texture to be this laser texture right here. And we already have a pretty neat laser, but there is also a few different stuff that we can change. 
for example the color to make it more red, then the light emission, decrease the light influence, as well as add some brightness. Now I'm also going to decrease the transparency to basically be zero and just change the width to, well, two or like maybe even three. And now we can even change the texture length or maybe even the texture speed. And now this is resembling a laser. So we basically just have this beam with, well, these properties, but let's actually just change its color to see how it looks, for example, when it's blue or maybe even orange. And yeah, I can basically just make this beam like very long and just have it pointing well whenever. So yeah, that's the laser. And basically, if you wanted to connect multiple beams, you would basically just do so by duplicating the attachment. And in this case, I have to rename them. So it's not going to be too confusing. And basically just duplicate the beam and just change the attachments. And I realize that this one is going in the wrong direction. So it should be like this. And now if you wanted to even change it, for it not to be a straight line, you could just mess around with the curve 0 and curve 1 properties. And same with the other beam. So now we basically just have this laser path and for a better visual effect I'm going to make the attachments not visible. And also to make the beams more smooth, I'm just going to increase the segment count. And well, now we have this laser. So yeah, you can basically just see that an instance like this can be extremely powerful for visual effects. And now there is going to also be another thing that I want to show with beams. And it's something that I used previously in my other videos. And it's going to be this zone, where this beam part, as you can see, is actually just a cylinder. And there are two attachments. If I make them visible, you can see that they are basically just positioned on the edges of the beam part. And there are going to be two different beams with basically just these properties. This texture is just a gradient where on the bottom it's zero transparency and on the top it's basically just fully transparent. So it's just a basic texture. And now the texture mode is going to be set to stretch because if it were static, it would kind of make these weird visual glitches. And on this one, the texture speed is set to zero because if it was increased and moving, you basically just wouldn't see any difference. Then the transparency is whatever number sequence. But if I scroll down, there is going to be the curve size zero and curve size one. And for these two, you kind of have to do some math based on the size of this part because if I for example scale it down the beams are basically just going to stay the same but if I move it away you can see that instead of a circle we just have this well egg shape so now this curve size would basically just have to be bigger same with the curve size one and 15 is going to be a little bit off but you basically just get the idea it's still kind of going to be an egg but if I scale it down a little bit now at least it's going to resemble a circle. So yeah, that's just a thing that you have to keep in mind while for example making these zones with beams. And if you are curious on where to get the beam textures from, the first option would be to basically just use the toolbox, go to the models and search for something like, for example, beam texture. And now you're going to have beam texture packs basically available for you to use and for example like with this one you have the credits to the rightful owners of the textures and the person that organized this pack and you can see that for example you have these beam holders which have the beam instance and you can get the texture id from right here but yeah there are basically just many more like there is going to be different ones from these packs right here but you could for example also search for something different like maybe red vfx and if you select one of these packs you are also going to have these, well, objects with a lot of different VFXs. And if you, for example, just go into one of them, you can see that they use particle emitters as well as different beams. And if I were to disable some of the beams on this, well, object, you can see that they are basically just going to disappear. And just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm just going to delete the emitter and just enable them again. So yeah, basically all of the different beams VFXs and beam textures are going to be available in the toolbox and you can also search for them online and I don't really have a place for that like for example ambient CG where I get materials from so I can't really recommend anything but if any of you guys are using some kind of a website to get these textures from then you can just comment it down below but yeah that's basically going to be everything for today so again go check out my Patreon page and leave a like and start to support the channel and thank you for watching hope everyone have a nice day and see you guys